Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. This In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it barbed wire because that's the way the Dow Industrials remind me over the last seven to ten days in terms of its trading activity. We're going to look at the Dow today, the Dow Industrials, the S&P 500, and then take a look at uh, a few of the indicators, the VIX, the McClellan Oscillator, the High Yield Bond Fund, and then I'm going to check in on Disney after it released earnings on Wednesday, see what that stock's been doing and how does it look. All right, let's start off here with the side-by-side -side view. The Dow was down 57 points this last week, the S&P 500 down 46, and the NASDAQ 100 down 268 points. So the, the Dow Industrial is just a couple little doji candles in here, back-to-back -back weeks, and uh, these other two, you could see inside trading ranges, both inside down type candles compared to the prior week. And the same thing happened over here on the NASDAQ 100. So let's uh, take, first up, before I go back and take a look at the Dow Industrials, let's look at the side by side of the industrials and the transports. The transports, after having a huge week last week, down 475 points this week. So it looks like we're now back in sync with the Dow Industrials because there for a while the transports refused to break higher and the Dow had. But now it looks to me like, you know, we've got this move right here, this strong move back up, and we've got a similar type thing right here with a nice clearer zigzag pattern in here on the Dow Transports. So let's go over and take a look. Let me go back to my cursor. Let's go back to the home screen and take a look at the Dow Industrials. So what we've done is we've moved and morphed the, uh, the wave count in here to the October low being intermediate wave one. If there for a while I had uh, intermediate wave one over here at the June low and then we had some kind of flat uh, that was going sideways with an A, B, C. That's still valid. I just don't like it very much, honestly. I just don't like it very much. And I think that this fits the picture and matches much better with what we're doing with the S&P 500. So this is what I'm sticking with. The real question is, is intermediate wave two done? Okay, with the pullback that we had with the high. Let me get my crosshairs back in. The high right here the week of December 11th. So that December high, remember the, the peak was December 13th. Okay, so when I look at, let me just move this over, focus on this for a minute. Let's take a look at two versus one uh, percentage wise. Um, that didn't help a whole lot, there we go. Okay, so we've gone fairly deep in terms of the retracement, no doubt. I mean, we pushed above the August high, we're greater than 61.8% retrace, greater than two-thirds, which is a Fibonacci relationship, two and three, 66.7%. Um, I'm not sure if I have the, oh, there we go, 786 So, you know, it, it is a deep retracement. It's definitely enough for a wave two. So the real key is, what are we getting in terms of uh, any kind of breakdown here when we go over and take a look at the daily? So this is the wave count I've got coming off that high in December. Manu wave one, Manu wave two pullback. We've just been kind of watching in here. Is it going to take out this high or is it going to come down and break out this trend line? But, you know, it's just been amazing how the last seven days have done nothing but trade inside the trading range of February 1st in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. And even if you go over and take a look, you could start with January 27th. I mean, just look at this. I mean, here's January 27th high. Yeah, this looks like barbed wire to me. I mean, it, you know, talk about a mess in terms of really not going anywhere. Uh, it just has not broken down or uh, continued to push to the upside yet. Now, we're watching for this to break down. Some of the indicators are really starting to get some pretty nice symbols in here. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. Here's where the SPX looks, and I've got the same count on the SPX. Now, with the SPX, why did we move to intermediate wave two here? Well, the main reason on, it, on the SPX was that this move 
we this move became larger than this move point wise. OK, so the way we had this is we had this as intermediate wave one, intermediate wave two, and then we were doing minor one, minor two. Well, having a minor wave two be larger than intermediate wave two, that just doesn't fit. OK, so this picture fits better. I like it better. Does it fit all of the exact parameters of a leading diagonal? Not quite, but it, it's, it's, it's pretty doggone close, I'll tell you that. It's a nice expanding leading diagonal pattern, both on the Dow and on the S&P 500. Let's go take a look at the daily view. So here's where we're at. And, and now we're lo looking at trying to get this wave two completed. Now it's very possible that this high that we got here on February 2nd, Groundhog Day, was the high. And I like the way we closed on Thursday, the way we came down here and closed below the trading of the prior, what, two, four, five days. Nice move, okay? But we need follow through to the downside in here. Now, uh, the other thing that I'm working on is, is the C wave. It's been a little challenging Finding, I mean, it, you know, either, you know, with a C wave, it's either got to be an ending diagonal or it's got to be an impulse wave. So here's my best shot on an impulse. I just can't seem to make an ending diagonal fit. So to me, this is an impulse. But then you've got to look at this wave right here and say, well, where's the five waves? Well, if you drill down, take a look at the 30 minute view, this is my best take. I mean, it fits. In terms of what we're doing, nice vertical type move for wave three, short little wave five. Doesn't really matter. There's no rule that says wave five has to be a certain length, you know, that type of thing. Uh, so we'll see if this plays out or not. The real key is, do we continue to break down and roll over in here or do we push higher on wave two? If we push higher, if we take this out and, and, and take out this February 2nd high, then the odds are that we're going to come up and challenge this, this August high here on the S&P 500. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at if we were to continue to push higher. Now, I like, as I mentioned, what, what do I like about this? This closing blow, the trading in the last five days, we got a similar type of activity over here. It actually closed below the low of the prior four days. But on the next move, we got a nice little island reversal type pattern in here. Nice gap, nice gap on both sides of this cluster of uh, price action. OK, we're not quite seeing that here. You know, it's not it's not identical in terms of what it's doing. But when I start to look at the indicators, then you start to say, hmm, Something may be going on. All right, so that's where we're at on the S&P and the Dow Industrials. Let's take a look at the VIX to start off. Okay, what am I liking about the VIX? Well, it looks to me like we finally broke out of this declining wedge type pattern. Okay, got a little bit of a throw over that happened right here. And then we came back up in here. Got our closes, and we've got three closes above the 10 day moving average. We got the 10 day moving average crossing above the 21, and we got a breakout above this pattern. So it looks like there's a decent chance, and we're back above the 20 level, a decent chance that this is underway. Now, just because you start to get movement like that doesn't mean that we're not going to get pullbacks in here. Yeah, you, we are. But I think there's a pretty good chance that this thing has turned and is uh, getting ready to move to the upside, which implies that selling and volatility is going to start kicking in uh, in the stock market. OK, so that's what we're going to be watching for. Now, let's take a look at the McClellan oscillator. All of a sudden, after divergences that it showed up in here from mid-January over here to February 2nd, Groundhog Day again, we had divergence, okay? We did not confirm a move higher in the market, just like what happened November into December and just like what happened at the August high. We quickly have smashed back down below the zero line, okay? And have gotten uh, a oversold, or not extremely oversold, 
when you get below minus 150, this dashed line down here, that's when you're extremely oversold. Just like up above, you're extremely overbought when you get up in this territory. Now, we ticked up just a little bit on Friday. Now, the other thing is the summation index, which let me move this over a little bit. Okay, this is like the sum of the McClellan oscillator activity. Well, yeah, we pushed higher in here into the beginning of February, but we have now turned down. So watching to see how rapidly does this come back down in here, just like, you know, the August high. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is we look at the breadth and watch the breadth of this. And of course, you know, the, the advancing and declining issues go into the calculations here for the McClellan oscillator. And I color code... Uh, red whenever the advances as a percent of, de of the total between the two is less than uh, or equal to 33%. Okay, well, four out of the last six days have had these kind of red days in here, with which implies some pretty, you know, bearish breath kicking in. We haven't had this kind of a stint in quite a while. Okay, so. I think it's another indication that uh, there's some weakness that's starting to kick in in here. Now, the other thing that I noticed here in the last couple of days is the high yield bond fund. Okay, so this has been acting pretty much in sync with the market, but now we're rolling over, we're breaking down pretty, two pretty strong days in a row. Okay, Thursday, Friday, and it was down 58 cents on Friday. So all of a sudden, this is starting to reinforce the message of being risk off. And it's really going to uh, get loud and clear when it breaks this trend line right here. Okay, so that is the high yield bond fund. Let's take a look at Disney. Okay, Walt Disney Company. It had earnings out on Wednesday after the market. Now, you can see it. this has had one heck of a decline from March of 2021, and not January of 2020. Uh, 2022, March of 21, 20302 to the low in December at 8407, intraday low, well, actually intra week. This is a weekly view. So pretty dramatic move down in here. Okay. And then now let's take a look at the daily view. We've had pretty good rally since that December low, pretty dramatic. It looks actually quite similar to the move that happened in August, from July, mid-July into August, the August high with the market. And remember, Disney is one of the Dow 30 stocks. So now we've gotten this reversal. Here's where earnings came out after the market on this bar right here, after the market on Wednesday. They exploded to the upside at the open. Here's where it opened up here, 118.04. It went 14 cents higher on the day and said, whoops, and came all the way back down, pretty bearish engulfing type of candle in here. And then the next day on Friday, we gapped down at the open and we actually closed below the trading of the last six days. So nice little negative move in here. We'll see what kind of follow through we get to the downside. Um, again, a little bit similar to this price action but we're not getting the gappy island reversal that we got, you know, the way I was talking about on the market, on the indices. We're not getting that here, uh, but we are getting some pretty negative looking price action. Now, the other thing, if you say, well, you know, I'm kind of bullish on, on Disney. The, you know, we got this activist guy in there and stirring things up and, uh, you know, the chairman came back and, and they're going to have cost cutting and layoffs and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, even if you are buying into the whole bullish talk, to me, when I look at this and I say, well, we've had one heck of a move, you know, yeah, 38%, 105, 50% retracement still down here, 101. And, you know, and we could go even a lot deeper. So I'm still looking for this to come back, come down further. It's a real question of how much further is it going to come? Now, where where could you get res uh, support in here? Well, here's a prior high. Kind of got some little highs in here on the daily. That kind of lines up with the 50% retracement. So I don't see any major support other than that coming into play right now. 
So when I look at that, I say, well, I, you know, maybe around 100, 101, this continues to pull back. We'll see what happens. Okay, that's it for this, uh, this video. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little bell and hit that little subscriber button. And uh, if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great rest of the weekend and enjoy Super Bowl Sunday.